Board of Education meeting 1587 is now called to order. Dr. Lake, do we have any changes to the agenda? We do not. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Motion by Andrew. Second. Megan, second by Megan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. And at this time, I would like to invite Henry and Claire, our students from Dressel Elementary, if you would like to come forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And everyone else, if you could please stand for the pledge. Tonight we are recognizing Dressel Elementary, and I will turn it over to Pat Chonakase, principal of Dressel Elementary, to present our recognition this evening. All right, uh, welcome, good, uh, good evening. I'm uh, thrilled to be here today to represent all of the students and staff at Dressel. Uh, we get to honor um, some, some students and some staff members tonight. So uh, first, I'm gonna go ahead and call up Claire Bailey, our fourth grade student. Come on up, Claire. So a, a few kind words by your teacher. Uh, Claire Bailey is a shining example of an eager self-starter with a heart of gold. Her kindness and willingness to lend a helping hand to her peers makes her an invaluable asset to Dress Elementary. Notably, Claire, along with her family, takes on the responsibility of delivering the morning announcements where they seamlessly incorporate science and history, making the daily routine an educational experience for all. If you haven't checked it out, you gotta get on our Facebook page. It's like a production of this school. It's awesome. Um, Claire is well-spoken, outgoing, and consistently gives her best effort in everything she takes on making it a true honor to have her represent Dressel Elementary. Her dedication and passion for learning and helping others makes her an exceptional role model and inspiration for all of us. Congratulations, Claire. Stay here. Stay here. So, here, we're going to have a certificate for you recognizing you as Student of the Month. So, congratulations. Yes, and then can't have enough Lindbergh swag, right? So here's a t-shirt for you as well. So there's that, and we're going to step over this way. We're going to get a picture from our display, and Arch, I do have some pictures for you. Perfect. All right, next is Henry. Come on down, Henry. All right. A a few kind words from your teacher, uh, Ms. Schaefer. So Henry works hard at everything that he does. He is a goal setter and a goal getter. Henry loves to learn and to be challenged in his learning. His creative thinking and ability to communicate clearly have helped him uh, be successful at a high level. The best part of Henry is his kind heart, patience, and compassion he shows to everyone around him. He is a great example to his peers and other students at Dressel. Henry, we have also have a certificate for you recognizing you as student of the month. So there's that for you. And we also have a t-shirt for you as well. So congratulations. Let's do a quick picture right here. Hang on, buddy. All right, the two staff members uh, we'd like to honor first, um, she's not here, she has left the district to um, go and uh, to aspire to her educational dream. She's an assistant principal now in another district, but Brandy Koppel, I can't, uh, I have to mention her just because uh, she was such an, an outstanding uh, teacher. She was also our district uh, teacher of the year, so we wish her well in her new adventure. Um, lastly, our support staff of the year um, is Lisa Billerback. so Lisa, come on down. So a few words from uh, the staff at Dressel about you, Lisa. So Lisa has been the Dressel nurse assistant since we opened seven years ago. She consistently exceeds the expectations of our Dressel teachers, parents, and students, all of whom benefit from her caring nature. 
While some people might crumble under the constant pressure of taking care of sick or injured children, uh, Lisa handles problems with ease. Being a school nurse is an extremely stressful and demanding role, yet we have Lisa, a true hero who cares for our Dressel students with compassion and tender-hearted love. One thing Lisa will never ask for is public recognition for her hard work, but that is exactly what she deserves. Without Lisa doing her job to the high standard she expects of herself, Dressel students and staff wouldn't be able to do their job to the full extent. Congratulations, Lisa, on this great honor. We have 4.03, another special recognition with Biz Savers Incentive Program. Joelle? I want to welcome up two gentlemen from Ameren, and um, I want to say finally I get to meet them in person. Uh, it's been four years that we've been working through a process that um, on April 2nd, when we passed the bond issue in 2019, just a couple months later, we started talking about we knew all the improvements at the high school were going to be big energy savings from replacing HVAC equipment that you know was outdated and there was a lot he's going to tell you the deets on that but um, so we uh, put a rebate application in and we've been working on it back and forth over the last four years and um, gentlemen I'll let you talk about the program Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Farber, and I'm with the Airman Missouri Biz Savers Program. Um, as Joelle mentioned, we pay cash incentives for making energy efficient upgrades. Uh, I am a born and raised Melville Panther, so please don't hold that against me. <laughs> uh, but I'm more than happy to assist uh, Lindbergh Schools with becoming more energy efficient. Um, since the program started in 2009, Lindbergh has completed 13 projects that have received incentives. Um, those 13 projects total 4 million. 51,224 kilowatt hours. Um, to put that in perspective, the average US home uses about 10,000 kilowatt hours, so that's the equivalent of taking 405 homes off the grid and never having them use electricity again. So uh, very impactful. And then those savings resulted in $686,903 in incentives uh, from Biz Savers, and then it saves the district roughly $325,000 annually in electric costs. So. Again, very, very impactful. Um, and then most recently, um, the district completed two very substantial projects at Lindbergh High School. Um, the updates included updating existing equipment, uh, installing new energy efficient um, equipment with the new expansion. The projects included um, getting rid of old inefficient fluorescent lighting with new LED lighting, adding daylight dimming and occupancy sensors to the hallways, classrooms, offices, and other small areas of the building. And in addition to the lighting upgrades, Lindbergh High School also upgraded to uh, energy efficient, um, I'm gonna tell me out with this, uh, chillers, uh, basically the cooling system. Uh, we won't bore you with the details on, on that, but uh, very impactful. So that, that project alone saved 3,602,403 kilowatt hours annually uh, and had a combined incentive value of $616,650. So, a uh, major part of our program is developing energy calculations to prove where that energy is being saved. And none of that would have been uh, possible without Kyle. Uh, Kyle's with McClure Engineering. And his team um, did a great job of capturing those energy savings. And none of this incentive money and savings would have been possible without all their hard work. So uh, we look forward to working with uh, McClure and the district um, on your journey to become more efficient. And uh, thank you for participating in the program.
Thanks. 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 See you. And at this time, we can take a short break so that everyone who is here for recognitions can go ahead and leave if they don't want to stay for the business portion of the meeting. And I believe the board will be taking our picture yes. oh, for National yep. Educators. Five point oh consent resolutions. There are none this evening. We will move to six point oh citizen communication regarding agenda items. We have one this evening, Miss Mrs. Sauer. Um, it's on item nine point one zero, the audit. So you have three minutes to speak. Thank you. The previous superintendent recognized the value of full disclosure. And had this information I'm going to talk about, had this information I'm going to talk about in his annual financials. This stopped, though, with the current administration. With the passage of Prop R, our district approved $105 million in bonds. These bonds were issued at a premium. That means the district received $10 million more than the face value of the bonds, a total of $115 million. About five months later, the district issued a type of debt called Certificates of Participation that provided just over $10 million for energy, pro energy efficient projects. These funds were held by a trustee, not in a district-owned bank account. And interestingly, the Ameren rep that was just here only mentioned energy projects of $4 million. Then again, five months later, in January 2022, more certificates of participation were issued for improvements at the high school that provided $12 million for projects and was also placed into a trustee account. Between the $10 million bond premium and the $12 million for improvements at the high school, it sure looks like the district is over budget by at least $22 million on Prop R. And we've got financials without a management discussion and no additional disclosures to show how the $22 million in certificates of participation affects our financial situation. Did you know the fees on these certificates were over $600,000 and that there are $30 million in liens on this very building plus assets at three elementary schools and Sparing Middle? Those $22 million in expenditures are not reported in the financials, nor are they approved by the board, because that certificate money went into a trustee account. It doesn't matter who technically owns the property. The taxpayers of this, this district are paying for this, and the board has a fiduciary responsibility to us. These, these certificates don't require voter approval, and it's a form of off-the-book spending that costs a lot of money and has encumbered district assets and needs to be properly disclosed. There is no mention which district fund makes the payments for these certificates. Are these payments why the CAPS program was abruptly canceled and students were left in the lurch? These certificate payments more than double beginning in 2028. How will that affect future budgets, programs, and pay increases for our teachers? And sadly, there's more. The expected cost of the energy projects, they exceeded the funds received from the certificates. So has the district used Prop R money for projects beyond those approved by the voters? And there is no management discussion regarding district savings versus the cost for this energy project. And with all this debt, there's no management discussion regarding the fact that our bond rating fell to AA and our debt rating fell to AA minus and what this means for the district. I had to get most of this information from third party websites. You haven't made this public. So I prepared a public handout with all this information. 
If the board approves these financials, you will be withholding vital information from the public. So vote no tonight on the audit report, and please begin immediately to show that you have integrity and value us in our tax dollars and get to work responding to the other documents I provided. A list of action items and a list of sunshine requests to restore trust and transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will pass them out. We will move to 7.0 communications with our calendar of events, Ms. Vetter. Thank you. Um, so some of the district events for this month are a reminder that district offices and schools are closed November 22nd through 24th. On November 27th, the Limber High School Choir has a concert. Teaching and Learning Advisory Board will be on November 28th. November 29th is the Strolling Strings Open Dress Rehearsal, so make sure to check that out. The high school band concert is on November 30th. December 2nd is Special Education Day. December 5th is the Board of Education Candidate Filing, and that opens um, at the county office. And there is also a um, orchestra concert that night, again, December 5th. On December 6th, Sparing will have their band concerts. December 7th is the fifth grade strings concert. December 11th is the technology advisory, and that meets um, later that evening in the Truman and Sparing choir concerts as well. A few more. December 12th is Truman and Sparing's orchestra concert, as well as the Fiddler's concert. The facilities advisory will meet at 4 p.m. on December 13th, and Truman will have their band concerts later that evening. Lots of good concerts. Finance advisory meets at 5 p.m. on December 14th, and all elementary string concerts are also that evening. Again, that's December 14th. And then we're back here for our regular board meeting on Tuesday, December 19th. Thank you, Ms. Vetter. Now we'll move to 7.02, report of meetings. Does anyone have state, parent group, or other meetings to report about? I know there were a few events this past month. I think most of us attended the MSBA, which is Missouri School Board Association Conference. And this is a time where we visit with our peers, find out what they're doing in their districts. But then also um, the Missouri School Board talks to us about their advocacy to Jefferson City um, and representatives there. Uh, my focus was on advocacy, and many districts are starting their own advocacy groups, uh, not only to advocate for their schools, but also to advocate for public schools across Missouri. And um, there was some discussion about AI, which is starting to come into play for us in education. And does anybody else have anything you want to add? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump that. in on that. The the AI speaker did an amazing job at the conference, and then I was I was pleasantly surprised to come to the technology board advisory, and then they had a they were discussing AI as well here in our and how it impacts our district, and it's it's really encouraging to see that we're looking at this massive movement and the way things are changing and making sure that we're doing everything we can to prepare our students for a world that you know the use of AI is going to be part of their everyday life. So it's exciting to see us looking forward and, and looking for how we can best use those tools. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. I attended a session on, um, uh, it, was, it was the financial, fi school finance uh, section, but the one that they talked about that's the big talk is the new bill that um, has the tax taxes frozen for seniors and how that's gonna be implemented. And it's, uh, Interesting because there's there's not a whole lot of detail on how it's supposed to be implemented. It's county to county, so there's a lot of discussion on how and this is actually going to happen. And there's some groups that think it's unconstitutional, so that will be interesting to see how it plays out. And I'm sure Joelle is on top of that and will provide us details when when we have them on how the county is going to handle that. Anyone else? All right, we will move to 7.03 announcements. Miss Better. We do have an announcement. Uh, filing for the Limburg Schools Board of Education election will begin on Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 at 8 a.m. and continue through Tuesday, December 26, 2023 at 5 p.m. Two positions are available for three-year terms. 
this uh, new this year that candidates must file in person at the St. Louis County Board of Elections office. The address is 725 Northwest Plaza Drive, St. Ann, Missouri 63074. No filing will take place here at the district office. Candidates can file between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Filing ends at 5 p.m. on the last day of candidate filing only, which again is Tuesday, December 26th. The Board of Elections office will be closed on December 7th and the 25th and may also close due to inclement weather. For the first day of filing, a lottery will be conducted to determine ballot placement. Candidates who file after the first day will be listed in order of filing. And that's it. Thank you. And then we have our review of upcoming Board of Education meeting agendas. Last one. So we meet again on Tuesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. for our regular meeting. Tentative agenda items are regular business items, policy, uh, we have some second readings, the GEMP Commission's appointment, and Kennerly Elementary is scheduled to be here for recognitions. These meetings are always open to the public and patrons are encouraged to attend. Thank you. 7.05, Board of Education member appointments. There are none this evening. We will move to 7.06, the MSBA November Board Report. Welcome to the November edition of the Missouri School Boards Association's Board Report. We begin with news from the state's top educational position. Missouri Education Commissioner Margie Van Dieven announced that she is resigning effective July 1st, 2024. Van Dieven informed State Board of Education members during their October meeting. Dr. Van Dieven has over 30 years of experience, including seven years as Missouri's Education Commissioner, serving from 2015 to 2017, then returning to the position in 2019. I have worked for a Democratic governor, I have worked for a Republican governor, and I have found that when we focus on students, it should be a nonpartisan issue. As I mentioned, it's not the political choice, it's the right choice. In a statement released that same day, MSBA Executive Director Melissa Randall said, Commissioner Van Dieven's announcement of her resignation at the end of the fiscal year gives us pause to celebrate the work of a transformational leader whose dedication to Missouri's children has been unwavering and inspiring. She provided guidance and leadership to Missouri's K-12 systems during some of our state's most challenging times, staying laser focused on ensuring a quality education for every child. The commissioner has been an outspoken advocate for our teachers and has promoted strong local governance and improved investments in programs to safeguard our children. We remain committed to continuing the legacy of excellence she has fostered and look forward to working with her until her departure next year. For the past few years, Missouri school districts have seen an influx of funding courtesy of the federal government's response to the pandemic and other sources. As a result, education budgets benefited, offering support to districts across the state. MSBA Senior Finance Director Linda Quinley says that as some of that funding goes away, it's important for district leaders and communities to recognize and address the inevitable challenges ahead. We are growing more and more concerned about the fiscal funding cliff that we know we've all been watching for but is now actually here. We are looking at the end of our ESSER funds. We are also know that the DESI waivers are coming to an end. And then we have state revenues down significantly because of the tax cuts from two years ago that are continuing to roll in year after year. We also know that the enrollment and attendance numbers have remained low. So collectively, all of those things are going to impact the future opportunities for revenues for all of our schools across Missouri. And it's never too early to start planning for your school district's next budget. Budget planning is a meticulous process that requires a thorough understanding of a school's financial needs, priorities, and constraints. A school finance webinar series hosted by Linda is starting at the end of this month. Get all of the school finance information you can use from the comfort of your home or office. Our webinar series around budget planning and getting the budget to the finish line is really what we want to help people do, is intended for our brand new finance leaders, whether they be superintendents, bookkeepers, finance officers. They're also intended for people who've been doing this work for a little while, but want to figure out how to make their budget a more usable document for their board, their community, and their administration. So anyone who's involved in the budgeting process inside the district is welcome to participate in this 
and hopefully gain some insight, some tools, and some tips to really present a great budget to the board in the spring. Topics include making and communicating the budget plan, projecting current year's actuals to springboard next year's budget, and more. Visit the MSBA website for dates for each meeting and registration information. And last, but certainly not least, thank you to all who hosted and attended MSBA's fall regional meetings. Meetings were held in all of the state's 17 regions as attendees gathered to network, learn, and share with fellow public school leaders to ensure all students succeed. That's it for this month. Thanks for allowing us to have some time at your board meeting, and we'll see you in December for the next MSBA board report. Thank you, Colin. 8.01 cabinet updates. We, were, we will begin with Dr. McKinney. But we will meet in December. Short report for me, thanks. And Joelle. Um, our um, facilities meeting has, is on December 13th, so we have not met for that yet, but that will be coming up after um, Thanksgiving break. Uh, this week, our finance committee did meet, and um, we had our auditor as a special guest at the meeting, so uh, we have two board members that serve on, on that committee. Our auditor presented the audit in detail, um, the employees of the district, anybody who was employed, we all stepped out and let the board and our finance committee members who are made up of finance um, specialists in, in our district. Um, met with the auditor, I would say, for a little bit over 30 minutes. And then we came back in and talked about the items that were gonna be on the meeting this week that related to finance. And it was a good meeting. Thanks. Thank you. And Dr. Sparks. Well, Andy gave it away earlier talking about the technology board advisory. So emerging technologies is a big topic for us and trying to develop guidelines about how we balance um, the opportunities that they bring for our students as well as student data privacy, which is always a concern when we're talking about technology. So some really good feedback on a draft document that we have um, that we'll continue to um, perfect over time and work with um, our teachers and our students on. Um, in terms of teaching and learning board advisory, we really have a goal this year to focus on college and career readiness throughout the year. So at each meeting, we're also taking some time to give updates on the Success Ready Students Network. So we collected a lot of feedback from our um, parents and students on the advisory about what they know about college readiness, um, what they wanna know more of about college readiness, and then the same for career readiness. And we're using that information, we're in the process over the next couple of months of developing our Success Ready Students Network dashboard. So how do the things that people say they wanna know more about, how do we infuse that into the development of that system? <laughs> And then finally, student life. Um, our focus this year is on transition support. So everything from early childhood into kindergarten, um, elementary into middle, middle to high, and then high school post-secondary also. Um, so we started the first couple of meetings really focusing on what's, what are people's dreams for how we would have transition support between each of those levels. And then um, between the previous two meetings, we got feedback from all of the buildings on what transition supports happen. So we've started to do a gap analysis between the dreams that we would like to have and what our reality is to see what recommendations we can make for the future. So again, that's going to be ongoing work throughout future meetings. Thank you. And we have our student report, Adam. All right. So this month is a little bit dense, so bear with me. Um, <clears throat> to start off with some LHS recognitions, this past weekend we had 43 Lindbergh students attend the Youth in Government um, conference um, down in Jeff City. So they're debating in legislative sessions, participating in appellate style judicial cases, um, and documenting this all through the media branch. Um, and just some, there's so many things I could list about how amazing this conference was. I had the opportunity to attend and it was a ton of fun. Um, but some things that really stood out, we had two of the nine presiding officer seats. Um, we had numerous individual awards, both in the media, judicial, and legislative branches. And then most excitingly, we had one student win the um, judicial trial for the entire state of Missouri of over 200 attorneys from delegations all across the state. Um, and that was the first time it's ever happened in Lindbergh history, so that was super exciting. Um, our Scholar Bowl team recently attended the Missouri Fall Academic Tournament where they took first place after an undefeated streak, which will advance them to the Nationals Tournament later this year. 
Um, our math club recently participated in a math club competition, um, and one student got first in their age division and 10th overall. Um, in terms of publications, um, our publication staff at Lindbergh High School attended the Journalism Education Association's National Convention in Boston this year, um, and they took home top 10 in the best in show category for one of their spreads, which is also super exciting. Um, I'm sure as many of you heard, our boys soccer team made it to the quarterfinals, so um, definitely show up to that game if you guys are free. Um, I think they're going against Park Hill South, so... Hopefully you make it to finals this year. I think I was talking to um, our gifted or honors coordinator today, and she says, I don't think that they've made it that far since her freshman year when she went to Lindbergh. So that was really exciting to hear about. Um, our cross country team, we had two students qualify for the state tournament, and one of the students actually broke the school record for a 5K run at the state tournament, which is amazing, and I love to see it. Um, our boys swim team had numerous individuals attend the state conference. Our orchestra students um, recently competed for a place on the District 5 Orchestra um, for the state. And we had over 15 st spots filled, which was, I think, more than double any other school in the region. Um, and then our band had 18 students qualify for the All Suburban Concert and Jazz Bands, and they placed 14th at the Bands of America Regional Competition, making it the second year in a row that's happened. Um, in terms of some upcoming events, tomorrow we have a Shakespeare performance at the high school. I know people are super excited about that and super excited to use the new auditorium once again. Um, so definitely show up to that if you are free. Um, and then our hosted chapter, which is for future health professionals, is hosting a mini med academy um, just to give parents some time off to do errand shopping, holiday shopping, or really just get some time off from their kids um, while also engaging them in some different medical oriented activities. Like I know they're having a flower dissection, for example, which should be super exciting. And then just um, a quick update for my board advisory. We met with Dressel this um, past week um, and they talked a lot about their community, how um, Dressel makes it very inclusive and how high quality teachers and staff really help develop that, which I know aligns with a lot of our district goals. So I definitely like to like to hear that um, in a more in depth um, summary of those conversations were provided in last week's Friday packet, I believe, and we'll have an even more depth one for um, some of our administrators. So that's it for me. I apologize. The mute button is on. You saw me hit it. I don't know what's going on. So, all right. Yeah. <laughs> My phone wasn't ringing. That I know how to control. Real quick, Jen. Sorry. Real quick, there's one more that I, I wanted to throw out. The uh, ribbon cutting for the Idea Center was this past week. And um, being in that space and watching the students in that space and watching uh, all, of the, all of the excitement and, and just... It was a really neat experience just to watch the kids move in that area and, and how the staff was working with them, and, and it was just neat to see. So I want to make sure we called that out as well. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. We'll move to 9.0 action items by consent. We have action items by consent 9.01 to 9.10 this evening. Does anyone wish to remove any of these items for individual consideration? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve consent items 9.01 to 9.10? So moved. Motion by Matt. Second. Second by Andrew. Does anyone have any questions or comments? I don't have a question. But, uh, well, I kind of have a question, but a comment on the school calendar. And I've not been on the committee for a few couple years, but I'm sure we look at what days the students don't show, show up, like what's a... A similar day um, and happy to see on the calendar the day after Halloween is off next year. That's been a popular point of discussion today. <laughs> and I don't know why that's such a big day but the, the kids just don't want to go and I felt so bad for the teachers because they're up and they have kids and, and all of that. And then also uh, reading through the audit and having sat in the tech um, the committee meeting for finance um, it was it was awesome to hear how they really dive into the books and they uncover and do deep dives and look for pieces of paperwork, pieces of paper and ask our Joel's team to provide those pieces of paper. And if we don't have those pieces of paper, where are those pieces of paper? So they do a very deep dive. Um, our, I believe it was Kevin, is that right? Keith? Keith, yeah, I was close, it was a K name. 
Um, he even talked about the fact that some accounting firms or auditing firms use AI or use a robot or electronic system to look through the books, and we do not. That's not what our firm does. So I was very impressed by that. And I just wanted to share that with everyone. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. We have a motion by Matt and a second by Andrew. We'll move to our vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. We have no individual action items this evening, so we will move to reports. 11.01 for the record. We have two. There are our parents as teachers, PAT program evaluation, and the ECE curriculum first reading. Upon review, if you have any questions, you can contact Dr. Sparks. ECE curriculum will be brought back to a future meeting seeking approval. 11.03, review of board policies FEB and KK first reading. Upon review of these policies, questions should be directed to Joel Scheibel and Dr. Brian McKenney. These policies will be brought back next month seeking approval. 11.04, there are no resident initiated agenda items. As we already conducted our executive session, there is no need to move to 14 point, there is no, I'm sorry, no need to conduct our executive session and we will move to 14.0 adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn board meeting 1587? So moved. Motion by Julia. Second. Second by Megan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Board meeting 15.